Welcome back to Bad Things in History, where you are our favorite viewer. Life in Texas was difficult during the 1800s. Settlers poured into lands that were already occupied by various Native American tribes. The result was a deadly conflict. Sometimes children who survived these battles were kidnapped and adopted by the local tribes. Today we are going to tell you the story of a woman who was taken as a child and then raised by the tribe that captured her. Fort Parker Massacre Cynthia Ann Parker was born in 1825 in Crawford County, Illinois. She lived there for the first several years of her life, but around 1833, her grandfather was given land in North Texas. He decided to move the entire family to the new territory. The Parker family's new home was not a safe place. The Comanche were among several native tribes that occupied land in New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. They did not like having white settlers living within their territory. The Parkers knew this. They began building their homes near what is today the town of Grosbeck. Each family had its own cabin as well as land to use for growing food, but in the center of the community was a large structure called Fort Parker. If the settlers were under attack, the plan was to find safety and shelter behind the walls of the fort. Unfortunately, the Parker family's arrival in Texas was poorly timed. On March 6, 1836, the Battle of the Alamo happened. When the Mexican army was victorious, this gave hope to the Comanche and other Native American tribes. They thought the time was right to attack. On May 19, 1836, the Parker family was shocked as up to 600 Native American warriors appeared. The attacking party consisted of Comanche as well as several other tribes. The settlers attempted to negotiate, but the native warriors were not listening. Before the doors of the fort could be closed, they rushed in and began killing the men. Several women and children ran for the woods. At least five people were killed. Two women and three children were kidnapped. Cynthia Parker was among those taken by the Comanche. Over the next several years, most of the captives would be released in return for a suitable ransom, but Cynthia would not be among them. She would learn to live as a Comanche. Living with the enemy. When Cynthia was taken from Fort Parker, she was about nine. At first, her life among the Comanche was not pleasant. She was treated as a slave. She endured physical abuse and was forced to work long hours. A family within the community took pity on Cynthia and adopted her. They raised her as their daughter and helped her adapt to a new way of life. As she grew into a young woman, Cynthia became fully Comanche. In 1840, when she was around 15 years old, she married the chief of the tribe, Pepa Nakona. He was one of the warriors who attacked Fort Parker. Despite this, Peta and Cynthia grew to love each other. Among the Comanche, it was customary for a chief to take several wives, but Peta refused to have any wife other than Cynthia. During their time together, the couple had three children. The oldest son was named Kwana and would one day become the leader of the Comanche. They had another son, as well as a daughter named Topsana. Cynthia had all but forgotten her original family, but they never stopped trying to find her. During the years she was assimilating into Comanche society, Cynthia's uncle never gave up looking for her. He petitioned the governor of Texas, Sam Houston, for help several times. Houston provided men to help retrieve the Parker children. Several of them were found, but Cynthia was never located. Although the Parker family couldn't find her, she was encountered by other people on a few occasions. On April 29, 1846, Cynthia was with a Comanche trading party along the Canadian River. Attempts were made to negotiate her release, but the tribal leaders wouldn't discuss it. A year later, she encountered government officials along the Washita River. They tried to get her to return to Texas, but Cynthia refused. She loved her husband and wanted to remain with her family. She wouldn't be able to stay with the Comanche forever. Battle of Pease River The Texas Rangers was a law enforcement agency with jurisdiction over the entire state. It was created in 1823. Eventually, the agency started handling tasks that would typically be the responsibility of the United States Army. Texas was too large for the Army to patrol effectively, so the Texas Rangers did what they could to protect the territory. In early 1860, Peta Nakona led his Comanche warriors on raids throughout Parker County. 
In an ironic twist, the county was named after Cynthia's family. When he was finished raiding, Petta returned to one of his favorite hideouts, but his actions put pressure on the Texas government to do something. Governor Sam Houston ordered the leader of the Rangers, Captain Sol Ross, to stop the Comanche raids. Early on December 18, 1860, the Rangers descended on the Comanche settlement where Cynthia and Petta lived. As Texas Rangers poured into the settlement, they saw a woman and a man trying to escape. Captain Sol Ross claimed they shot the man and captured the Indian woman. They would soon discover that the Indian woman was Cynthia Parker, and Captain Ross would claim the man he killed was Petta Nakona. When the Rangers captured Cynthia, she was holding her infant daughter, Topsana. In broken English, she told the Rangers her name. Captain Ross knew about the massacre at Fort Parker, which had happened years earlier, and he also realized that his current captive was a member of the Parker family. Ross contacted Cynthia's uncle, Colonel Isaac Parker, and told him his niece had been found. She was taken to Isaac's home near Birdville and remained there for some time. Cynthia's story spread quickly, giving hope to other families who had lost children during Native American attacks. In 1861, the Texas State Legislature gave Cynthia land and a pension to ensure that she could care for herself and her daughter. Unfortunately, Cynthia could never adjust to her new life. She wanted to return to the Comanche and made several attempts to escape. The Parker family always stopped her. She never returned to the tribe that raised her. In 1863, Cynthia heard that her youngest son had died of smallpox. Then in 1864, her daughter Topsana passed away from influenza. Cynthia never recovered from her grief. She survived for a few more years, but one day she decided to stop eating or drinking. In March 1871, her life finally came to an end. Although Cynthia was dead, her story wasn't over yet. Her son, Kwana, was still alive and he never left the Comanche. The Last Chief Kwana Parker was born around 1852 somewhere in Oklahoma. He was a teenager when the Texas Rangers captured Cynthia. Years later, Kwana would claim that Sol Ross didn't kill Petta Nakona. Kwana said his father lived for four more years until 1864 when an illness claimed his life. About a year after his father died, Kwana joined other Comanche warriors on their raids. He gained a reputation for being a fierce and fearless warrior. By 1867, most of the Comanche had been moved to reservations, but Kwana was now a war chief and his band of warriors refused to surrender. The United States Army tried for years to locate Kwana, but they could never find him. Meanwhile, he would emerge without warning, attacking and killing hunters and merchants all over Texas. The hunters were killing animals the Comanche needed for food, so they were his primary targets. The situation finally escalated in 1874. A medicine man named Isatai claimed he could make himself and his warriors invincible. He and Kwana gathered 250 warriors. Then on June 27, 1874, they attacked a hunting outpost in the Texas Panhandle. More specifically, Kwana and his warriors attacked. Isatai watched from a hill nearly a mile away. The hunters had long-range hunting rifles. They hid behind barricades and shot the Comanche at a distance, killing several of them. The attack was a failure, and Kwana was wounded. The warriors were clearly not invincible. Later that night, Isatai was severely beaten for failing to protect them. As news of the battle spread, it ignited a new round of violence. A month later, another band of Comanche attacked the Texas Rangers. President Ulysses S. Grant told the United States Army to subdue the natives by any means necessary. General Philip Sheridan ordered several columns of cavalry to descend into Texas and push the Native Americans to the Red River. Over 20 engagements occurred during what became known as the Red River War. Casualties were usually not high during these encounters, but the army made it a point to kill all the horses and buffalo. Since Native Americans traveled with women and children, they couldn't continue fighting without access to food. The war finally ended when Quana and his followers surrendered at Fort Sill in June 1875. The Comanche were through fighting, but Quana's story wasn't finished yet. The Final Years The Comanche had never been united under a single leader. Typically, they existed as several smaller tribes, each with its own war chief. But after Quana surrendered, the United States government appointed him as the leader of all Comanche. One of the first things Quana did as leader was convince his people to settle on a reservation in southwest Oklahoma. He tried to teach the Comanche how to live a more sedentary life. 
Samuel Burke Burnett was a rancher who established the 6666 Ranch. Today, it is known in popular culture for its appearances on the television show Yellowstone, but in 1881, Burnett was just getting started. He established a ranch headquarters near Wichita Falls, Texas, which brought him into contact with Juana. Soon after Samuel Burnett established his ranch, a drought killed much of the grass in Texas. Juana and the Comanche were concerned because it seemed like ranchers might be allowed to access the reservation. However, a friendship would emerge between Quana and Burnett, which would help avoid further acts of violence. Burnett and several other ranchers negotiated a lease for access to the reservation land in Oklahoma. In return, they had to pay the Comanche. Quana also became a rancher and purchased his own cattle. In 1890, he asked the United States government for help financing a new home's construction. Quana said he needed a residence better suited to his status among the Comanche. The government refused. However, Samuel Burnett funded the construction himself. The building became known as the Star House. The reason why is that Quana had several stars painted on the roof. Over the years, Quana would host several famous guests at his home. Among them was Theodore Roosevelt. In 1905, Quana even attended the president's inauguration. Quana was also responsible for helping lead the Native American church movement. It is a religious tradition that combines several Native American beliefs with aspects of Christianity. It also involves the use of peyote, a hallucinogen. Quana explained the difference between his religion and Christianity. The white man goes into his church and talks about Jesus, but the Indian goes into his teepee and talks to Jesus. Quana even acted in several silent films. His last appearance was in The Bank Robber in 1908. As his life neared its end, Quana's thoughts turned to his mother and sister. In 1910, the bodies of Cynthia and Topsana were moved to the Comanche Reservation. Samuel Burnett helped Quana by paying for new granite headstones to mark the graves. Quana Parker passed away in 1911. He was buried next to his mother and sister. The inscription on his tombstone reads, Resting here until day breaks, and shadows fall and darkness disappears, is Quana Parker, last chief of the Comanches, born 1852, died February 23, 1911. After his death, Quana was criticized by some Comanche for selling out to the white man. Others praised him for leading his people through a difficult time. Today, both Cynthia and Quana are celebrated. The Quana Parker Society in Kachi, Oklahoma holds an annual reunion where they recount the stories of his life. The city of Crowell, Texas holds an annual event to honor the memory of Cynthia Parker. There are also several roads and towns throughout Texas named after members of the Parker family. Was the Parker family right in trying to save Cynthia from a life with the Comanche, or would it have been better to leave her alone? And was her son Quana a hero or a traitor to his people? In the comments below, let us know what you think about this troubling story. If you like having random history come your way every week, please help us. Like this video and watch another one. And if we're not making content you want to watch, tell us how to do better. Thank you for watching Bad Things in History.